Okay, Jack and James went up a hill. In you come. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? You're right? forgotten already. Jack, James, James, Jack? Jack, James. James. So confused. <laughs> James, Jack. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right, so you are our fantasy football gurus. We well, we try to be anyway. I gave you the title. You should have just said yes. Yes. Well. Uh, okay, so <laughs> predictions for last week. Uh, did you get them right? I, I did pretty well, actually, but um, Jack over here didn't do too well. Awkward for you, Jack. Our joint so, um, team did well, which, which yeah, I'll take the credit well. for. Okay. But apart from that, I didn't have a great week. Okay, James, what were your...? Well, I just had a, a very, very good team, whereas Jack didn't. So, uh, you know, I kept in the right people. I feel like Aguero you're being real humble the, about Aguero this. Aguero was the guy. Yeah. Um, didn't have Aguero, I did you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> OK, Catch well, let's have a look at your predictions and see where it all went wrong for you, Jack. I think Boric as well is the one that really stands out for me on that graphic. 8.3 points per million pound you spend on him. Um, he's racking up the points as well. He's a very good shot stopper. Sunderland don't look like they're going to keep any any time soon. And eventually you do want your clean sheet from your goalkeeper. Absolutely, I think so. I think Ben Foster would be a better shout completely. Really? Yeah. yeah. The way West Brom play as well. Mm. I don't see why you wouldn't go for him. Yeah. I think these three guys, Lalana is on fire for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, showed when he came on against United the week before, just changed the game. So he has that sort of impact. Mm. Sigurdsson's always a focal point uh, um, at Swansea, yeah, as is as is Pius. I think what's most important about that video clip is to see that Toby and Justin are still sharing one shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do you make? <laughs> what do you make of all of that then? So, Jack, what happened? Come on, tell me. You're going to have to tell me. Not a lot, really. I think I went. I, it, it just shows fancy football. You can never really pinpoint it too much. I mean, we always give top top quality advice. Don't we? <laughs> well, we try, yeah. But um, I think I just had an off week. I think. I, I mean, I went here last week because I probably would have put him off tipping all of that. Um, I was at the Chelsea game. Oh, okay. Uh, well, West Ham game, watching West Ham smash Chelsea both on and off West the pitch. Um, I'm West Ham. Oh, how many seats did you tear up? Uh, seven. <laughs> he, br he brings more in the um, office every week. Yeah, it was, it, it was good fun. But um, at the same time, if I was here, I probably wouldn't have tipped any of that. OK, so you're going to need to tell me... Oh, OK, go on. Start with what... Go on, start with which was the worst. Um, probably Pickford. He let him fall. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. He's our subkeeper. He, he made a few saves, though, didn't he? Yeah, so that, that, that was the thing behind him. I wasn't expecting to concede four... Especially the way that Arsenal sort of went and then just had that flash of three goals. But um, no, none of them did too well. Okay, so Ben well. Foster as well led in four goals, I believe. Uh, in your face. Jack's like, I just don't want to talk about this. I don't really Any, know. Anything just, else just to move talk on to this about? week's yeah. tips. Uh, just shut up from talking about this week. Okay, so the football fan cast, let's get up at this week's then. Right. So where to start? Uh, Shawcross. I think the thinking behind this is they're playing West Ham, so points, points, points from all of them, yeah. really. Be very easy, won't it, Jay? No, <laughs> no, just no. I think really they, they've sort of sorted out their issues from the start of the season. They're looking very strong, um, and you need you know a, a reliable centre half, which you know Shawcross. You're going to get points each week because he's played every single minute this season. Allen, I don't know what he's on this season, but he's doing unbelievably well. And I think the two goals at the weekend will give Boney, you'd hope, the sort of kick into the form that he, he showed at Swansea. Yeah. Um, and against West Ham's defence, yeah, well, he'll clean up. Less of that. Um, I, th I just think with any fo fantasy football team, you need a, you need a good spine. Um, this isn't to say that you should have a spine in your fantasy football team that has just one club all the way through. But mm -hmm. at the same time, with Stokes' uplifting form and Bonnie's now got himself on the score sheet after a couple of, sort of poachers' goals, um, it's well worth sort of looking at some of Sto Stokes' players and perhaps thinking, well, perhaps they could... You know, we could get them in because they're relatively cheap as well. So okay, so he's going for cheap. You should never yeah. buy cheap bin bags. So is this the same? For <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, everyone's been saying about Adam all season. He's been doing pretty well. So okay, now yeah. guys, this is the first time that we've done this together. Yeah. Uh, can you talk me through the points? So we've got the. I think the two ones we always look at are the points per ninety, which Joe Allen's cleaning up on, and the points per million you spend, which again Joe Allen's cleaning up on. Um, I think that just proves that you don't have to spend a hell of a lot of money on fantasy football to do really well. If, you, if you're sort of quite canny with your picks, a team like Stoke are perfect to look at because 
they started the season awfully, but going forward, you wouldn't anticipate their side to concede too many. Okay. Um, but they're not going to—they're not going to be players that everyone's going to have in their team. So Joe Allen's proved so far this season an incredible investment. So you can be cheeky and get a, a little gem, but not something that everybody else has sort of gone for. Exactly. Yeah. If you yeah. take a look at stats like this, then you're, Especially you're, you're going to be fine. I mean, look them. at Shawcross. I mean, he's a central defender, but he's got two assists already this season, which shows that you know that there are points across the board at Stoke. It's just picking the right ones. Okay. Let's move on to the next slate. Zlatan replacements. Okay, talk us through. Well, Zlatan hasn't scored for, I think, sort of five or six game weeks. Um, we everyone keeps going, do I, take him in? do I take him out? Do I keep him for one more week? I think... Do you think, think he's just doing it to mess with fantasy football? Do you think it's maybe, yeah. Problem? Probably, just, maybe. just based on his ego. He'll probably just, you know, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll tell everyone to take him out and then he'll score a hat-trick at the weekend. But <laughs> I think we spoke about Zlatan alternatives two or three weeks ago and now we've just gone straight in with, no, get him out. Yeah, because, I mean, they, put, well, they played Burnley last week at home. Had like 38 attempts on goal. Um, I, think, I think 34 and, of them were him. Yeah, so I mean, get him out. And he's so expensive on the game. If you get him out, you can put that value elsewhere. OK, all right. So talk us through Lukaku. Well, Lukaku scores pretty much every week. Um, unfortunately, he got another one against us last week. Um, I tipped him not to score against us for once this week, but he did against West Ham. Everyone uh, scores against West Ham, though. I'm not sure what you're at. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Lukaku especially, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. scores against us. So I think, um, I think with any, all three of those strikers, really, that, uh, they're going to be on form. Kane is a wild card for us because no one's really sure whether he is going to make the, the North London derby at the oh, weekend. He'll make the North London derby, I think. But um, I think Pochettino has probably got him under his sleeve, ready to, ready to throw in. So, and again, I mean, all three of those are a lot cheaper than Ibrahimovic. So. And Tottenham have been missing a focal point last... I mean, Son came in and did really well mm -hmm. when Kane first got injured, but the last few weeks they've been missing a focal point. So I think as soon as they get Kane back in, the tactic will be get forward, find him, give him as many chances as possible. So he's going to have a lot of time on the ball and a lot of time to pick up points this weekend and going forward as well. I'm pretty sure he loves a goal against Arsenal as well. So if he does play... Well, he's then, one um, of only three players, I believe, to have ever moved from Arsenal to Spurs. So I think he's... Can you count him as one? Yeah, yeah, I, I think know. he's counted. I think he's counted. I know they're Arsenal fans, but... It, it, well, it's all right, they're quiet. But, um, <laughs> they're literally going to hit me by the time him? they get on here, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but he does love a goal against Arsenal, so if he does play, then count him to bag a couple and up those averages as well. So. OK, all right. Next slate, let's pop that on your screens. OK, away day players. Now, explain to me, away. the guys explain this, but what are away day players? It's just players that tend to score more points away from home than they okay. do at home. All right, so where to start? Oh, probably the, probably the best away. player on there, Dusan Tadic. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, we've, we've always had strong form at home, but um, our, sort, our sort of relative success of the last few seasons, we've, been sort of, we've, we've never been defined as, you know, they're really good at home or they're really good away. But um, Tadic is so far proven this season that he's doing, he's doing very well away from home. Um, scored against you, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think we're right. clear. Everyone scores against Russell. <laughs> yeah, we've gone through that, haven't we? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think these are just ones to look at. These guys, are, they're, they're all away from home this weekend. OK. Um, we spoke about Kane coming in, so Son might not get 90 minutes, but Kane coming back from injury, I think Son will definitely be on the pitch. And, you know, against a team like Arsenal, will definitely pick up some points, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the glares I just got there. Really um, um, OK, what about uh, Benteke? Well, Benteke is... Um, I don't, I don't rate him at all, to be fair. I'm quite glad West Ham didn't sign him, but his stats prove that he's pretty good away from home this season. He's, he's proved you wrong then, hasn't he? Uh, well, at home he's rubbish. Palace fans must be hoping that he's going to start picking up some form, repay he, that fee. He, but he'd fit in at West Ham, wouldn't he, being rubbish at home? Well, he missed the penalty against us, so it doesn't matter. Really <laughs> Do you um, want me to leave? <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we'll just argue for it. <laughs> no, I just think, I just think that, um, away from home, Ben Teke seems a little bit more comfortable. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, everyone expects him to score against Liverpool last week. Playing against his former club, didn't do it because he was at Sellers Park. I think away this week. I'm just sure they're playing. Who they're playing this week? Oh, really Three really bags. We should know, but we, we don't. But we know he's away, we know and we're backing him. Home. We're backing him to to score. So. And I think, like like we said about Kane, um, he's the focal point of that team. They're very good at getting crossed in the box. They've never had anyone to finish it before. They're like a long ball team, like West Ham were a couple of seasons ago. So. Okay, Crystal Palace have got Burnley, so he should. There we go. Yeah, he exactly. Score, yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, like we said, we can. He's a focal point. He'll get a lot of crosses. He'll get a lot of chance to get headers in on goal. Um, 
and if he does get a lot of the ball, there's bonus points available there as well. What are the? Go on, talk me through the bonus points in case anyone doesn't know. Well, it's a, it's a, an algorithm that Premier League have got. So it's basically the highest performing players over the course of that 90 minutes will get. They'll stagger it between three bonus points, two and one. Okay. Um, so if the guy scores one or two goals, he's likely to get three. Um, or even even so. if he's just involved, you know, if he gets the way they play, if he nods a ball down, you know, he gets a couple of assists, gets one assist. It just is involved in general, then you know he's going to be picking up the points. Okay, all right, let's move on. That was your away day players. Okay, now this is the most on form team. This is your is this your joint? This is our team. This is our joint this team, is our team. Okay. that we picked this morning. Okay, did you, how, how long did it take for you to argue out this? Not too long, actually. Oh, okay, well, obvious. Let's start from the top, Costa. Well, that's an obvious one. Yeah, I think he's just in such a... He scored against us. Very good goal against us at the weekend. Um, strong vein of form. Everton at home, you'd sort of back them to... You'd back them to win that. Um, yeah, he's just he's just playing very well. You can't... We brought him in for... Was it Ibrahimovic? Just, we brought him um, yeah, I think we took his last hand out and put, put Costa in. Um, but I think the key there is we've got yeah. Costa and Lukaku, they're both playing against each other. That's a... I think that's going to be a high-scoring game anyway. Both okay. teams are very, very good attacking wise. So the likelihood of both those getting the score sheet is quite high, especially with Lukaku coming against coming to Stamford Bridge against his former club. He's going to want to get the score sheet and add to his seven goals already. So that strike force is should return some points. So they're your recommendations yeah. for up front. Okay, moving backwards. Pulled in um, Gundogan this week, just off the back of he got two, two at the weekend, two in the week. We don't normally like to go a bit knee jerk and just go. He's in form, get him in, but. Um, I think, but you did this week. We did this week. <laughs> they've got they've got Middlesbrough he's at home. He's cheap as well. He's very cheap. Five seven million. Five, so five point six, I think. Which is so. If he's getting you know goals and assists every week, that's such a bargain. Who Sanchez? Doesn't stop scoring. Does we've spoken about it before. I think having he's a midfielder and he's still he's still classed as a midfielder on the game. He's playing in the number nine role. I know Giroud's coming back in a bit, so that might change. But um, playing the number nine role is he's bound to score. And he's another one that loves to go against. Tottenham, I believe, as well. I think, so. yeah. yeah, it's going to be. Do you know what? Every time we say this, though, <coughs> especially with Arsenal, it's going to be goals. It's going to be nil nil, and it's going to be nil nil because every time we said that, it always is. It's just stalemate, mm -hmm. and I kind of feel like both teams. They catch each other out, don't they? Yeah. Okay, moving along. Well, we put Moses in this week because he's he seems to have nailed down a starting role for Chelsea, Finally. completely out of the blue, because um, everyone thought he'd sort of be leaving the club after he had a loan spell with. Almost every other Premier League club. So. So right, it's kind of Chelsea's bag, just loaning everyone. Uh, yeah. Someone came on our sofa and told us that they were all spies. So all the, <laughs> that's all that's the, the conspiracy, well, is it? That they all just Chelsea spy. loanees are spies. Fair play. Yeah. But I mean, this how is, often this, do they play for Tess? <laughs> this must be the first um, Chelsea loanee that's gone out of the last three or four seasons. It's actually now down a starting spot. Mm. Um, he's playing as a defender, which means that he's listed as a midfield in the game, so there's there's not much points in it. But he's knocking, up, like racking up the assists, racking up the goals as well. So. He was he was very impressive, impressive against Saints um, at the weekend. So a lot of chance of made, made some very good runs. Yeah. Um, and really, Everton, Cummins sorted out Everton's defence to an extent. What a job he's doing, though. Can you not, Lord Cummins? <laughs> You really? two are way too sensitive. <laughs> no, I just don't like the bloke. How? How can you not like him? Because I'm a Southampton fan. Yeah, I know, but other than that, he's a blooming genius at the moment. He's a good manager. A genius is a little bit strong, isn't he? He's just nah. a snake. Wow. Oh, that's a little bit strong as well. No, it's not. He said he was going to stay and then left for a smaller club. <laughs> that he's now thrashing it with. All right, move yeah. on, Alana. <laughs> well, I'll leave you that to you because you, you wanted to keep him in, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I just, really, I just rate him. I think he's, he's fitted into Klopp's philosophy really well. Um, I beat him up last week and he didn't pick up many points. Okay. But they've got Watford this weekend. Um, you can never really tell who's going to turn up from Watford. They'll either pull off a blinded like they did against United or it'll be a ball draw or they'll just roll over and lose. So I'm hoping from Lallana's point of view and the points point of view that it's the, the latter of those three. Um, and really, they're, they're sort of turning into an turning Anfield into the scary place to go that it should be mm. um, under Klopp, so I'd, I'd bag him to pick up a few points. OK, Bellerin? As uh, long as he starts. If he starts, I mean, he is, he's got a bit of a black mark over his name at the moment, but if he starts, then um, he's got a higher percentage uh, point, points per 90 value as well, so um, if Arsenal turn it on at the Emirates, which they have done quite a lot this season, barring one or two games, 
Um, I think even though they are playing in the North London derby against Tottenham, he's going to rack up some points, whether that's assists or just you know just general you know just general a really really good performance. So we got back him. Okay, Walker. Similar story Same to better than really. Um, he's, he's I think is it his points per million or points per ninety? He's through the roof. I think he's Tottenham's top point scorer. He's absolutely smashing it in terms of fantasy football this season. He's in the dream team. Um, so there's no real argument to be taking him out, whoever they're playing at the moment. Loves a point away from home as well, I think. He does. I think his average is quite high. OK, nearly there. Smith? Um, similar story to the other two. I think we, we've emphasised over weeks and weeks and weeks that the defence, there's no real need to be picking centre-halves um, just because they're they not, they're they're not as prolific points. in terms of points. Um, Smith loves to get forward. They're at home, so we're doing it a lot. They'll be pressing Sunderland. Um, and he'll either pop up with a screamer or a couple of assists. And Sunderland are rubbish as well, so it should, <laughs> should be all right. It should be all right. Expert analysis. I love, I love the way. Sunderland are rubbish. We're not allowed to terrorise West Ham, but you're just flat out Sunderland are literally rubbish. OK, uh, Pickford, he was saving... Uh, although Sunderland being rubbish, he's kind of saved them from being even worse this season. Um, I think he's a fantastic keeper. I don't think he'll be there for, for much longer beyond the season, so um, he's a great shot stopper. He's going to face a lot of shots this weekend, which means he'll get a lot of points in terms of saves. OK. Um, now, we've got Mark Blackburn's team, so let's get Mark Blackburn's team on the screens for you. He wants to know who he makes captain. Oh, who's he got? Something okay. similar to you, so Lukaku and Costa, but then nothing else is the same Nathan, as Nathan you. Redmond. Sanchez. Definitely not. What are you talking about? Nathan Redmond and Van Dijk are very wise picks. Well We're done. only his experts. Well done, Mark. You know what's trying to mug people up? Um, I would have either Costa or Sanchez. Just, just a quick one. In the office today, I got told by James to take Pyatt out of the Ooh, team. Oh, James. So if you want to talk about that, maybe you should take Pyatt out. I just think he's quite expensive for what he hasn't really done this season. So. OK. And from one wonder guy, he's not really done much. So, yeah. But then against Stoke this weekend, we could... No, but in terms of captain, Costa or Sanchez. OK. I'd, right. lump, I'd lump with Costa, I think. I think the game against um, Tottenham for Arsenal is going to be so on edge that you can't quite call it, whereas Chelsea at home to Everton at the moment, I think Costa. OK, now let's get Raj's team on. He wants to know where he can improve. I think he means in his fantasy football, not in life. Or just <laughs> Take out any, any claret and blue. Antonio. Interesting. Well, Ant I Antonio, Antonio was... A, I had Antonio in, earlier in the season. He's a very, that was a very good pick. Um, he was when he was playing, not as a right back. When he got pushed further forward, he was, he was well. He played as a striker at the weekend, didn't he? Has he gone off the boil? I don't think he's. Uh, I mean, Bilic has kind of used him as a uh, as a utility across the entire f like pitch at the moment. Um, he's not a striker. He's not a right back, but he's he's okay as a wing back, and that's where he scored most of his goals. So unless he's playing wing back again this season, which I don't think he will, I don't think he's gonna replicate the form he had earlier in the season, so he might be one to consider. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm hoping he starts scoring goals again, but I don't think he's going to. Really? I don't think he will. Oh, we just need to check Raji taking notes. Yeah, he's on his computer, he's taking notes as, as we speak, he's writing it down. Uh, OK, any other changes that you I think, think there? gone quite heavy on the strikers. Austin's a great pick, obviously. Um, but maybe take a hit on either Costa or Aguero, get um, maybe someone from a, a sort of mid-table team in and, and maybe spend a bit more money at the back um, and then the keepers as well. I mean, like Van Dyke or something like <laughs> What, someone better? Yeah, Van Dyke. <laughs> OK, well, before you, <laughs> before you two fall out, let's get our fan jewel on. So let's get our first one on the screens. OK, Chelsea under Conti, four consecutive clean sheets, 11 goals scored in the last four. I think this is, yeah, what we're saying with Captain Costa, this just proves they're in incredible. I think October, they lost one game which was a, a blip against a very poor West Ham team. Um, probably distracted by the home fans lobbing yeah, stuff. Uh, did you guys come in together? Are you planning on leaving together? <laughs> oh, sorry, this, this is us every week. This is us every week. We just, just use this. To... We, work, we work in an office together every, every day each week, so we just use this sort of slot oh, to I hear you're to Toby's favourite married couple. I see there that explains go. the dress codes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll just, just bat that one away. Um, they don't either. They're not either replying anymore. They're like, yep, 
Yeah. I, I did warn him I was wearing navy blue. He just chose to ignore You me. actually phoned him beforehand to tell him what he you were wearing. He texted him this morning. But I just, just didn't look at my phone, so... Yeah, whatever. I looked at my you phone when I was on the blue. bus, yeah. and I was like, going through the drawers. The <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm implying he lives at home or anything. Um, back, back to football. Yeah. <laughs> back to fan deal. Um, no, I think, yeah, they're just... They, they, in the Premier League, they played four, won four, didn't concede a single goal for the whole month. Um, and just scored in abundance. So Chelsea is very... It's, it's rare we advise to put three players from the same team in a fantasy team. But if you're going to do it at the moment, it's got to be Chelsea. And with Fangio as well, it's different to Fantasy Premier League because um, if you're putting a striker in, he might be a little bit more expensive, but he gets five points for a shot on target okay. and then 15 points for a goal. So technically 20 points for every goal. Um, so if, if, you know, if you can afford to get likes of cost you on your team and you found your team, then you've got a chance of winning some money as well. Because and you, and you're picking up break. points for, for drawing fouls as well, which Costa's brilliant at, because he just gets <laughs> on there and winds everyone up. So he's, he's, he he's up a points. nailed on pick for Fanjul this weekend. OK, let's get our next uh, pick on for Fanjul. It's the ultimate 11. Talk me through this. So this, this is all the top performers oh, this from, was last week, from the last it? game okay. week. Yeah. Um, so they're ones that, you know, as long as they've got the right fixtures to go to, um, then they're ones to consider. I think James McArthur is one that, if you had him in team, you did very well. He scored two headers, which just nobody... <laughs> James McArthur no, scored two headers. Nobody could have seen coming. It? It's ridiculous. Um, but the likes of Gundogan, like we talked about, very in form. And what we tend to see is a, is a lot of Liverpool on these every week. Not so much the defence. Um, <laughs> That's because they've not those. really worked that one out yet. Three they're no. getting there. But, but then at the back, you've got three Liverpool defenders this week. So maybe it's something they're slowly sorting out. But the likes of Coutinho, they're involved. The way Klopp plays with that sort of fluid front four, they're, they're involved all over the place. So well, I think that, that defence is the way it is because all three of them scored, I believe, against they did. Palace. Yeah. Um, which obviously helps. But again, they've all got, like what, 20 points each just from scoring. OK. Um, but then across the board as well, like Coutinho, you know, he's, he's wrecking assists up all season. And then Matta for United is one of the one of the most underrated United players this season in both Fangio and Fantasy Premier League. And then it, um, show, it shows with the sort of cheaper keeper. That, um, I like that cheaper keeper. Cheaper keeper. Yeah, might, might carry on using <laughs> that. Um, Tom Heaton's always going to be involved and he has had a brilliant season so far. No matter how Burnley do, he's impressive week in, week out. Well, he gets a lot of action. So. Exactly. <laughs> so it just proves that you don't have to spend a lot to, um, yeah, and the to um, rack up the points. You get points per save as well. So if you've got someone you know is going to be really busy in, the, in between the sticks, then... Like Adrian. Not Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pick Adrian. This concedes too many. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and just up the front, Bonnie and Aguero. Uh, well, Bonnie's up there because he's finally decided to start scoring. Um, I, I always said that if he, if he nabs a couple of sort of like poachers' goals, then he, he'll start scoring every week, so... Um, he's definitely up there for that. But then Aguero, I mean, not much you can say about Aguero other than the fact that he's world-class. So he's going to be in there most weeks, I think.